In the next section, we'll look at a more interesting abstract data type, the priority queues, and how to implement it. And uh, again, because many of you have seen this, uh, I want to start with just this question, checking what you uh, know about this already. Now, if you haven't seen binary heaps, there's no way you can know the question. So you can just put in some random guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the other point, if, if you have seen it, um, read very careful uh, the different answers. So it's just asking about heap ordered trees. Um, I want to give some, some more people a chance to vote, and I'll briefly show you again what the, what the tally in the room looks like. Uh, I won't discuss it then, because basically the rest of this section will answer that question. Uh, so let me show things at this point. Um, most people say it's a tree where all keys in the left subtree are smaller than the key at the root, and all keys in the right subtree are bigger than the key at the root. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll see uh, <laughs> you'll see about that, right? But let's before we talk about heaps, that will be the implementation, the data structure. Let's first talk about the abstract data type, the interface, uh, and that's uh, called a priority queue. Uh, I put this like a. <laughs> put this glass in a plane in there because sometimes you get people that have priority boarding or priority security and they can just uh, skip the queue, right? That's the uh, rough idea of a priority queue, uh, but it's a little more less binary. There's, if you board the plane, you're either standard economy or priority or business class or whatever. Uh, here it's not, not so uh, strict in, with just two priorities. Uh, instead, we have a a way to insert elements where we specify a number or some other ordered thing that tells its priority. So it's a, a whole spectrum. Um, and then you can at each point in time ask for the element with the maximal priority, or you can delete that element. And these two operations we'll try to do quick, as well as insert. Um, Sometimes we'll also need a change key operation where uh, you can update the priority of something to a new priority. Uh, we'll, we'll only talk briefly about this, um, but insert and delete max are the, the main operations for priority queues. Now this is all formulated where the maximal element is what we'll remove, and I'll, I'll try to be um, consistent in using the max-oriented version because that is what is used in the red book, the algorithms book that I gave you as a resource for this unit. Uh, but there is a symmetric version where everything where I say max is replaced by min and it's just the same thing. Um, and some books rather use min. It depends on what application you have in mind, what is more natural. So just keep that in mind, both exist and both make sense. Uh, they're just uh, symmetric versions. All right, let's again briefly check that the definition is clear. So here's um, a bunch of numbers that are inserted into a priority queue. Come on. And then you call delete max. It's not supposed to be a trick question. All right. 
um, we have a clear majority, and uh, you can still put your vote in. Uh, what's supposed to happen in a priority queue is that the element with the largest priority gets removed first if you call delete max. Uh, what I didn't say in this question, uh, and what, what we'll also do in the slides, is when I insert numbers, uh, I'll just treat the number as its own priority. So the number, the value, and the priority are the same. You will see that um, for, so in this case, we should remove 9 because that's the biggest number. That's, that's what I meant by not a trick question. Uh, it might have been slightly tricky as a question because I said insert needs to have two parameters, a value and a priority associated with it. For all of the slides, we'll just assume that x is not important. It's actually never interesting for the implementation. You just carry that along. And the priority is all we care about. And we'll just use numbers uh, as of an abbreviation. But the implementations can be more general. We have an abstract data type. So uh, we can think about implementations for that abstract data type. And again, there's many options. And before you start with something complicated, you should check that the simple versions don't really uh, cut it. There's usually two obvious solutions. You can either have an unordered list. So you just keep the elements when they are inserted. You put them at the back. Uh, so that's very fast for insert. But then you have no idea how to find the maximum. Now you can be slightly more clever. You can try to keep track of the maximum. But then if you remove that maximum, you don't know how to find the next smallest, and so on. This is, is not really uh, leading anywhere, so the delete max will always be slow in this. The other option is you uh, keep the elements in sorted order somehow, and we'll, we'll talk more about this. Um, but if you, keep that, if you keep that in a list, you don't really have a way to jump to the right position to insert a new element. So suppose you have those elements all in a linked list or in an array. It doesn't matter for that, for that fact. Now you know the new element should go in the middle. There's no way for you to get there. So it's all not really useful here. Seems sortedness doesn't help. Uh, if you think about it, these are two extremes, entirely unsorted or fully sorted. And maybe uh, it's, it's more useful to have something in between, a slightly sorted list. And that's exactly what we'll, what we'll use. Um, so forget about the picture in the top for the moment. If you've seen binary heaps before, you may have seen different versions. So maybe uh, also try to forget that for a second. Uh, binary heaps can be defined either as um, arrays or as trees. Let's first look at the array view. So you have uh, an array with the following weird property. For every position, you know that its value is, is smaller than if you take half of that index. And that is something like a slightly sorted list, right? It just means for, for every element, there's one other. If I take an element here, there's one at half the index, which is, which is bigger. It's a slightly weird condition. Um, but if you think about it, you can, you can reason from that, that the maximum has to be in the first position and so on. A much more natural way to think about that is to imagine a binary tree behind this. And that's what we'll, what we'll use for thinking about the operations. Uh, but what makes binary heaps um, what makes binary heaps so fast is that they can be implemented in just an array by using index, uh, op index computations. But the tree view is the one that's more illuminating. So uh, a binary heap is a tree that has two properties. First of all, it has a specific shape. It's a complete binary tree, uh, and it's heap ordered. And uh, to get the terms there at least mentioned, uh, a binary tree in general is a tree where we have nodes. We have a single root somewhere at the top. Computer scientists are weird, right? We have one root, and that's at the top. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you have two children for each node, a left child and a right child. No political implications. Um, and either one can be missing. They can be empty or well, null. Uh, and then you can form larger trees from this uh, as you wish. And they can have any shape. A binary tree just says every node has 
a pointer for a left child, a pointer for a right child, and either of them can be empty. So that's one example. A complete binary tree is one that has a very specific shape, namely it always has um, all nodes filled, so all children exist, except for this last uh, level here, where there's a, a, a part on the left where all children exist, and then the rest there's no children. So I'll, I'll just draw this with, this with this fat line to indicate it. If you want to be more formal, then everything up to the penultimate level is complete, so every node has exactly two children. And on the, on the penultimate level, from the left, there should be children in all cases, and then no children afterwards. The second thing we have to talk about is heap order. And that's essentially what this encodes, um, but in the tree it's much more natural. The heap order just means this. Uh, for every node, the parent is larger than the children. Okay. Now, um, why is that? Why is it true that these two views are the same? And why is it that we can think about trees when we store things in an array and vice versa? Uh, that's because if we have this nice shape of a complete binary tree, we can uh, store the nodes in an array in what, what we call level order. So we start with this node, then we go down to the next level, then we do these two, then these two, and then these two. You walk along the green line and assign indices to the array just in increasing order. So that one will be stored um, at position 0 or 1. <laughs> um, I want to stay consistent with the book. I think they start at, at 1 in this case, just to make the math a little nicer. And then these 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again, something for you to work out at home if you, if you want. Uh, this condition on an array corresponds to that condition about parents and, child and children if you store the nodes in this way in an array, in level order. It's a, a typical nice interview question that people ask in technical interviews. You're given a binary tree with pointers, traverse it in level order. Uh, but I'm not going to do that with you now. Here's an example that I prepared. Uh, of a binary heap with concrete numbers as values. And so you see, when, whenever you walk down a path from the root to some leaf in the tree, you see the numbers going down. OK? 87 is bigger than 66, bigger than 40, bigger than 25. Now, between different siblings or uh, between different nodes on the same level, there's no order enforced. So only if you go down the tree, there's an ordering. But this is enough to guarantee that the maximum has to be in the root. If it was anywhere else, it would have violated the condition with its parent. The only node in the tree that doesn't have a parent is the root. So the maximum is always there, which means the operation of finding the maximum is really easy. And we'll, talk, we'll look at the other operations in a second, and I'll keep a, a copy of this, because we'll want to, uh, want to work with that. Let me motivate a, a little bit why we do this, and then I'll show you how it's done. But uh, I think it's, it's insightful. If you see this first, the definition, why this weird shape of the tree and why this weird uh, invariant, it's maybe not so obvious. Um, the shape of this complete binary tree just makes things a bit more simple, because for every size, there's exactly one way the tree can look. Right? If you think about it, it's completely defined. It has to be complete up to a certain point, and all the children up to a certain point have to exist. So the shape is, is unique. This shape also has the nice property that it has minimal height among all trees with that number of nodes. There's some others with the same height, but it's among those with minimal height. A and the last part is the most important. Because it has this very nice regular shape, 
it's uh, very easy if you store it in an array in level order to navigate between the nodes. And you can work this out, and the videos I linked on the website do this in much more detail. For now, let's just take it for, for granted. You can go to the left child, right child, or parent by just doing simple arithmetic on the, um, on the index. And that's all we need. So uh, yeah, so this, um, this uses that we start the array at index 1. You can just use a standard array with starting at 0 and leave the first one empty. But it makes the math a little nicer if you start at 1, waste this one memory cell. The second part I already alluded to, why, why enforce heap order? Well, that means the root is the maximum. And uh, on the other side, only this paths down from the root are sorted, so you don't sort too much. Because if you sort too much, you get trouble in, with insertions to figure out where exactly things can go. But how to do inserts, um, we still have to talk about. So as you will have seen now for the question from before, that's the right answer. Heap ordered, just to repeat it, means at every node your value is smaller than your parent. Unless you have no parent, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> 